in a world where SUVs are big. One SUV had to be the biggest. And this idiot bought one. As a fan of ridiculous oversized SUVs, I was perfectly content with my 2003 Hummer H2, which I've owned for about the past year, even though it had a lot of obvious drawbacks. The visibility inside was awful, and for the size, the cargo area is also really disappointing, but still, I loved that thing to death and had no intention of selling it, that is, until a more ridiculous SUV became available locally and I couldn't help myself. I truly could not resist buying the best version of the Ford Excursion, the largest mass-produced SUV ever made. And it being the biggest is just the beginning of this truck's ridiculous resume. Back when the Excursion was introduced in 1999, automakers didn't have a wide line of SUVs yet, and the term crossover that word hadn't even been invented yet. With Chevy, you had the Blazer and the Tahoe and the Suburban. And with Ford, you had the Explorer and the Expedition. And for some reason, somebody at Ford thought the Expedition wasn't large enough, despite the fact that it's gargantuan, and decided to build this, the Ford Excursion, based on the Ford F-250 platform. It's huge! Initially, there were three engine choices for the Excursion, starting with the 5.4 liter V8, which could barely get this thing out of its own way, followed by the mighty V10 gasoline engine, which was okay, fine, but then there's the best engine, the 7.3 turbo diesel Power Stroke V8. That legendary engine, which fortunately is what this Excursion has. Yeah. <laughs> the camera is not even tall enough to reach the engine bay, but this mighty 7.3 liter diesel is under the hood. It looks magnificent, and it's a heavy engine. And the fact that this thing is four-wheel drive puts in the total curb weight at somewhere around 7,600 pounds. 7,600 pounds. Just for reference, that's 2,000 pounds heavier than a Chevy Suburban or a Ford Expedition, and 1,000 pounds heavier than my Hummer H2. It's roughly the same weight as a Hummer H1, depending on the spec, but this excursion is three feet longer than a Hummer H1. It's six inches taller than a Suburban and seven inches longer as well. This thing is absolutely massive. So massive that when you're sitting inside driving this thing, you feel like you're a god. You feel like all the other cars on the road are insects that you can smash. Now it seems Ford took notice of this fact that this thing is so much larger than any other car on the road, and when they actually crash tested it with their other smaller cars like the Ford Taurus. In a head-on impact, the Excursion did its own version of a monster truck rally and just drove up over the Taurus, which obviously isn't going to work, so they added extra reinforcement to the bottom of the bumper so that catches the car. And in the back, they made the tow package standard. They put a giant tow hitch receiver on the bottom, so anybody unfortunate enough to rear end one of these didn't go underneath it and get crushed. This thing is just so massive, so huge. It's kind of snowing, spitting outside, so I'm very thankful to have this garage, but this excursion, despite the size of my garage, which is plenty big, barely fits enough for me to film in here. It's, it's just unbelievable. It's gonna be a lot easier for me to vlog this thing to give you a little POV to show this thing's mammoth size. Now, on camera, it looks big, yes, but since it kind of has the same rough shape as a Ford Explorer, it really doesn't look that crazy until you see one in person. I mean, just look at this grill. Absolutely massive. The same as an F-250, yes. And the same solid front axle as a Ford F-250. Look at that big front differential there. Look how high we are off the ground on a completely stock vehicle. Completely stock. But despite its mammoth size, this is a very simple vehicle. It was very simple to build and it reportedly cost less to build than a Ford Expedition. But when they went to sell it, it cost way more than a Ford Expedition. But it didn't matter because people bought the heck out of these things. Just look at the inside. This is Frank's favorite car because of the cloth seats and there's so much room for activities in here. With the third row folded up, this rig could fit eight full-size Doug DeMuros perfectly without any complaints at all. But once again, look how simple this thing is. It looks like a basic work truck, but they are wanting forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for these things. $60,000, Frank, do you know? 
Do you know how much $60,000 is? It's crazy. Now, a lot of people would miss the creature comforts, all the infotainment and technology of modern vehicles, but personally, I think this excursion is way more comfortable than most new SUVs, partially because of these seats. Look how much cushion we have here with the seats. That is a long dead trend. Now seats are rock hard. They barely have any cushioning because they think you need to be more bolstered and supported that way. I don't understand. It's just so minimalist. There's very few embellishments in the interior of this thing. You got one kind of metallic excursion bag but really not much else. A sea of gray, a little clipboard here for paper. So while I love the interior treatment, you all may not be that impressed yet, but take a look at the back of this thing. I may have a hard time opening it because we are at the end of the garage. Look at this triple door action here. And the third row seat is currently folded down, but look how much room I have to store cargo back here with the third row seat in. With the third row seat out, I could do snow angels in the back of this thing. It is so massive, so ridiculously huge. Now, despite loving the Ford Excursion, I never thought I would buy one because when they quit making these in 2005, prices steadily appreciated to levels where I didn't think it was worth it. Now, Ford very wisely ended a production on the Excursion in 2005. Citing demand had been satisfied for an SUV this huge, and they really had some foresight with this because this was well before gas prices went way up, and the Great Recession took out other large SUVs like the whole entire Hummer brand, so Ford, they were really thinking to go out while they were still ahead. But now as the supply of nice used examples of these are dwindling, prices have gone way up, but I was really lucky in the fact that my friend Bob at EuroAsian Auto Inc., he took this on trade for only $7,000. It has a little over 200,000 miles on it, but the overall condition is incredible, and that's because it spent most of its life in Arizona. Even though it's a four-wheel drive, it spent most of its life in Arizona, and is optioned with the best engine, the 7.3-liter Power Stroke V8. Driving this thing is a hoot, so let's go. All right, let's see if I can get this thing out of here without doing a 50-point turn, Frank. Oh, listen to that. That sounds like I'm trying to turn like that. Oh, we go. Oh, there's it. Oh, here, here, here. There we go. why the 7.3 diesel excursion is the most sought after example the one right here and the first reason is because of the torque this turbo diesel is might oh sorry frank there is just so much torque which is greatly needed with this 7,000 pound suv this is the only engine where the power feels adequate really Certainly not fast by any stretch of the imagination, but not slow either. The second reason why the 7.3 is the most desired is because of its longevity. They use this for many years, spanning decades. And towards the end of the 7.3's run, which is very close to the year of this Ford excursion, they had perfected this engine to near invincibility. With the right care, these things can literally last forever. And unfortunately, the diesel engine that replaced it it's not the case. It went from a 7.3 liter to a 6 liter, and those turbos trying to up more power to the 6 liter would just blow head gaskets, and the complicated emission system was a nightmare as well. So those engines did not last long. That's why a 7.3 liter can be worth double or triple that of a 6 liter, just because they do not last nearly as long. And the same can be said with the V10 gasoline engines. The gas mileage, you're lucky to get in the double digits with those on the highway, and they weren't the most robust or serviceable engines either. They're so big, and they had a tendency to blow out their spark plugs randomly. The threads that hold down the spark plug would strip, and then it pops out, and the thing sounds like a clattering, really bad diesel. This is a good clatter here. Oh, yeah. It's just amazing. I feel like I'm an over-the-road trucker in this thing because it's so massive, but this is a production car that is completely stock, unmodified, completely stock. Now, the condition and the price of this excursion made it irresistible for me not to buy. I, I had to buy it, but I did notice what I thought were a few issues. Number one, I'm greeted with a familiar face, the warm amber glow of the check engine light in the dashboard, the very sparse dashboard. But also, I noticed that the steering requires a lot of input to keep this giant barge 
pointed straight. I'm constantly having to make steering corrections to this thing to keep it pointed straight, which I'm not used to with a modern car. And also, there's a big wake-up call when I first went to fill up this thing full of diesel. It took 40 gallons and cost over $100. Ugh. More ridiculous this, with this Ford Excursion, but look, next to me is a Ford Escape. I'm passing a Ford Escape right now. It looks like a teeny tiny ant. A Hyundai Sonata? It's a little thing, little bitty thing. It's absolutely hilarious to look at normal cars in this thing. It completely changes your outlook on other cars. I can see the top of a roof of a Ford F-150 in this thing. It's nuts, absolutely nuts. Look at this little Hyundai right here. Oh, it's so cute. Before we go back in the garage and I give my final thoughts, I do need to Doug DeMiro out a little bit here because it is so ridiculous. Once again, this is a power plug sliding slot. I don't know why it needs a fancy garage door for the power slot, but then there's another one down here. Two cup holders here, two cup holders here, and two cup holders here. So that is six cup holders within arm's reach. Amazing. Now, after doing some research, I found out that the steering traits that I noticed with this excursion, the fact that it needed a lot of input to go straight was something that new car reviewers noticed way back when the Ford Excursion was new. So apparently that's normal. I also scanned the check engine light and it's only throwing one code for a glow plug, which is supposedly very easy to replace. Still, it has over 200,000 miles on it. It's almost 20 years old. So I imagine the car wizard will find more things wrong with it. That's in the next episode, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get this thing up on the lift because weight wise, it may be way over capacity. I don't even know if I want to go underneath it if it is still under capacity. Thank you for watching.